Hi there, and welcome to the next iteration of the Planet Zoo Starter Habitat series. Indeed, the Starter Habitat collection has had an update to include all the new tropical animals included with the new tropical pack. So, not including the exhibit animal, that's four new animals added to the collection. If you're new here and you're not sure what the Starter Habitat series is, it's a collection of basic habitat blueprints that I've created and uploaded to the Steam Workshop, and it's a habitat that's ready to go for every animal in the game. The blueprints have been created with starter players in mind, so they're all made from the basic pieces in the game, only the Planet Zoo theme, so you don't have to research anything before you can place it. There's no DLC needed to open these. Essentially, it's a basic habitat that meets the space requirements of the animal and the terrain needs, the water needs, and there's no fiddling about to get it to work in your zoo. It should be ready to go straight from when you've downloaded it. Today, we're going to take a look at the brand new habitats I've created for the tropical pack animals, starting with the Asian Water Monitor. The Asian Water Monitor is a nice addition to the game. It feels a little larger than the Nile Monitor that you get with the base game, so this means that you're able to open the habitat out a little bit. I didn't feel the need to put all of the focus right up by the guest barrier because the guests are going to be able to see them from a little ways back being the size they are. The Asian Water Monitor's space needs is very compact, which I'm pleased about. I much prefer working on the smaller habitats than the ones that are big open spaces. About half of the space requirement in here is for water, and first time ever in a starter habitat, I've put in a waterfall. I focus quite heavily on rock work this time around. This is a blend of the small tropical rocks and the small mossy tropical rocks. Hard shelter and sleeping quarters is up at the back so they can look over the waterfall when they're resting. Another first for the starter habitat series, I've added the egg props for the monitors. So it looks like they're nesting up here. I like the idea of having a higher level sandbank sort of feel for this bit. Gives it that sense of being on a tropical river. Down by the water's edge at the front. Again, I've been fiddling with the rock work here to make it look like cobblestone-y sort of effect. If you drop this into the ground enough, the monitors and smaller animals like them have no problem getting over this. For the guest barrier for this enclosure, I've been able to drop this to a very low height. The water monitors are incapable of jumping, so no danger of them getting out here. This is natural wood pieces and the glass panels, giving guests a great view of what's going on in the enclosure. So yeah, that's the water monitor enclosure. A fun little animal to work with, definitely. Let's move on and take a look at the Fusa habitat. This is a let's say very quirky Madagascan animal. Definitely one of the more unique animals we've seen added to Planet Zoo. Oh, yeah, they do jump around a lot. I have noticed with the Fusa. The babies are adorable. They're so sweet. Just look at its little face and its little paws and the really long tail. Ah, I keep having to stop myself referring to this as a cat. It's not a cat. Its nearest relative is a mongoose. No cats involved. What are the adults up to here? Oh, I think they're going to play. Let's see what the animation looks like. Hmm, that feels similar to what the, I think, the fennec fox does. So it looks like a cat to me. It plays like a fox. We're getting all sorts of variety with Fusa here, aren't we? Anyway, I'm supposed to be showing the habitat, aren't I? Right. Something fantastic with the 1.13 update is that we can turn off climbable pieces. It's the first time ever for a climbing animal I've been able to use these climbable pieces as the barrier and there's no risk of them escaping because I've clicked the magic button that says they can't climb it. Instead, I've got plenty of climbing space that they can get up inside the enclosure. I tried to meld this with the trees so the climbing poles weave their way in and out of branches and stuff. They can climb the trees and that did create a problem where they could jump onto the roof and escape the enclosure. So I've got a barrier up here that means they can't get onto the roof. The Fusa are a shy animal so I've added a little climbing space at the back here that isn't viewable by the guests. They may hang out back here to de-stress themselves occasionally. As with the water monitor, this is a relatively small enclosure. The Fusa don't need a lot of room. Another thumbs up from me on that one. Overall, pleased with how this turned out, especially being able to use climbable pieces there. With the starter habitats, it can be difficult because the pieces are so limited. So having to exclude climbable pieces for animals like this was a bit of a pain. 
Great that I don't have to worry about that anymore. Right, I think it's time to move on. Next up, we're taking a look at the Lar Gibbon. For the Gibbons, I've made a caged enclosure that's attached to a large hard shelter. Gibbons are the second animal with brachiating capabilities added to Planet Zoo, so I've made sure to leave plenty of space for them to display that behaviour. Got one asleep on the leaves here. I have put beds in for them. <laughs> Don't know why it's decided to sleep on the leaves. Anyway, inside the shelter, I've got the feeding station here, close to the window for guests to view. Down the back of the hard shelter, I've added more climbing frames. There is a lot of climbing pieces in here because that's what the gibbons do most. In the outside section, plenty of tropical fauna and flora. The gibbons do like a lot of coverage with the plants. With the climbing posts out here, I've used the tropical vines. I wouldn't normally use this plant, it's quite fiddly to work with, but because the gibbons are tropical and they will climb across the vines, I figured it was best to put them in. One issue here, I might have put too much climbing stuff inside because they're not using the outside stuff much at all. Maybe I'll get rid of this big piece at the back so that they're using the stuff outside a bit more. Yeah, this separate piece, mm, might not need it. So that's the Law Gibbon enclosure. Next up, we've got the Red River Hog. Once again, a relatively small enclosure to work with, which surprised me because the warthogs in the game need a lot more space than this. There's nothing particularly fancy about the Red River Hog enclosure. For the guest barrier, I've repurposed the barrier that we made for the water monitor earlier, but I've added an extra mesh at the top because the Red River Hogs will jump over the smaller size fence, definitely. One thing to note about the river hogs, considering the space requirement is so small, they did have quite a big hard shelter requirement. It does feel a little mismatched in that they don't need a very big enclosure, but half of it's taken up by the hard shelter. So, I don't know, it, it feels like the calculation's wrong on that to me. Hey ho, I made it work. Interestingly, considering it's got river in its name, there's no water requirements for the red river hog. So the outside space is decorated with the tropical planting and I've utilised that rock work again to break up the space a little bit. Looking from the bird's eye view, you can see with the tropical pack how the space requirements are much less than the requirements have been previously. I'm kind of hoping this is going to be an ongoing trend. I mean, if you compare this to the previous pack, so this is the striped hyena and look at the space these guys needed. I'd say that's about five times bigger than the tropical pack habitats I've created there. A big difference and it certainly did make it a little bit more enjoyable to meet the challenge of creating these starter habitats this time round. So I hope these are a good addition to the collection. All four of these are now on the Steam Workshop. There's a link to those in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.